typically when we run radiance renderings we're really trying to understand what's happening with the cones and the cones in our eye uh, which are sensitive to red green and blue um, are most sensitive it in the green range now we know that there's this other set of eye, uh, cells in the eye the ganglion uh, cells the IPGRC which are actually more sensitive uh, in the blue range and to be more specific um, here is uh, looking at two different curves that uh, we're using in LARC the the first one the the heavy uh, solid line is the photopic curve or V lambda and this is what we've been using since the beginning of, uh, of lighting metrics because really we're trying to understand what the eye sees and the sensitivity across the visible spectrum to, uh, to those different wavelengths. So you can see the different sensitivities um, and, and what we see here and beyond is a CIE D65 um, uh, illuminant. Um, now what Lark is trying to do is is take that a step further and add in this dotted line which is the ganglion cells which is what triggers our circadian system from day to night and helps regulate our uh, our sleep and wake cycle and redu by reducing melatonin so LARC is actually going to uh, use a series of coefficients for both 3 channel and 9 channel to uh, post process in this range in addition to the photopic so that's kind of, in a nutshell, what Lark's trying to do. And we're using two different curves uh, to that end. And one of them is from Mark Ray and Mariana Figueroa in the uh, uh, RPI out of Troy, New York. So um, their curve is used in, in Honey, in sorry, in Lark. And it's going to output uh, both a picture file. If you inputted a picture, you're going to get a picture out, and it's going to be a picture you're going to want to look it through at fall in false color and similarly if you put in an irradiance you're going to get a, a lux out um, so we also are using uh, Lucas which is uh, a researcher out of Manchester in UK which um, the, the uh, Lucas's lab has a, another curve it's, uh, not too unlike rays that um, we're using as a, an additional um, metric. So we're, we're trying to use all the different curves that are uh, out there right now and give designers uh, a kind of opportunity to, to see what's going on. And then we have the photopic pick and lux as well, which is going to be uh, the more typical workflow with radiance. So that's three channel in a nutshell. Nine channel is the same idea, you're just tripling everything. So instead of one picture, you have three. And instead of one irradiance, you have three and then you run the peak home and set a directory. Um, to note is that uh, the picture one is actually going to be uh, relating to the first three parts of the B channel. So um, your picture one is going to be right here and that's going to be in a sense a B1, B2, B3 channel and then the next uh, image is going to be in focused in the, the, the green so that's going to be a G1, G2, G3, and then finally you'll have a R1, R2, R3. Okay. Um, so I guess in this section we're still under prep is that we uh, are going to set grid points, viewpoints, and the normals. And this is typical to a radiance workflow. Um, these points are being set in the Rhino file. So if I run the Rhino file, um, under I believe we have a point slayer and you're gonna see we have a couple stations set up and these points uh, are just generating basically where your eye is and then uh, using these two points to create a normal to show the direction of the view and that's going to be used both for illuminance so illuminance is being gathered at your eye on the vertical plane as well as uh, it's used to generate the image and so we have two cameras uh, in this model. So, okay, back to Grasshopper. So we have one looking north, one looking west. And there's a slider here that um, can be used to toggle between those views. And you can batch, batch run this under Animate if you want to do multiple views in a single run. 
So the next step is we are using uh, uh, Honeybee and Ladybug to generate, um, well, I guess we start with a EPW file, which uh, is uh, on my C drive, and you can download uh, readily. So that comes into this component of Honeybee. And uh, from here, we are taking the location to this Honeybee, uh, or, or I should say Ladybug component, and we're getting our latitude, longitude, and time zone. Um, we have a uh, another set of uh, tools just to be able to quickly change the month, day, and hour. And uh, I have a sky, a sky type that's um, uh, going to change. Um, so two is intermediate, zero is sunny, uh, four is overcast for CIE sky. Um, and that's going into this sky type also uh, through that's honeybee and I have a simple ground that I'm creating and there is a uh, a point I'm using the origin I'm moving it up a slight bit and that's going to be used to uh, uh, calculate our global horizontal um, and I'm using honeybee here to set the quality for the radiance and then uh, all this goes into this recipe. So we're, we're setting our uh, working directory. Um, and so all of this, I'm going to hit true. I'm going to run radiance. And all of this is to calculate this number right here, which is going to be our global horizontal illuminance. And so that number, I'm then plugging in over to this uh, sky definition. And to zoom out and give you uh, kind of a bit of context is we've gone through the prep